As we've established in earlier videos, links in the description, neutron stars are freaking scary. Whether they're smashing together to create kilonova, forming magnetars that can wreak havoc on the systems they inhabit, or whether they turn into pulsars, which emit beams of light and gamma rays, like lighthouses that spin at ludicrous intervals, sometimes as fast as 600 times per second. What I like to call lighthouses of doom. One thing is for certain, you would not want to be anywhere near one of these things. They are true cosmic nightmare objects. But what if one were to be absorbed by a red supergiant? And what if that caused the formation of a new type of star? That's right, we're talking about thorn Zyktal objects, how they're thought to function, and which stars astronomers currently think might be good candidates for them. But first, be sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, ring that bell, and comment your favorite thing about neutron stars. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Mind's Horizon, and this is Science Get. Thorne's Zyktau objects were first proposed by physicist Kip Thorne, who is now a Nobel laureate, and astronomer Anna Zyktau. Together, they suggested that it might be possible for a neutron star to be absorbed by a red supergiant, creating a star within a star, or as one publication put it, like a Russian nesting doll star, which is both a hilarious mental image and a very apt description. As for what they actually look like, you probably can't go off of the artistic impression here, since it looks more like the Eye of Sauron or something than a supergiant. Though one would think that maybe the material from the red supergiant would act more like an accretion disk around a black hole or something than like a shell of a star around a neutron star. But hey, that's just me. I write science fiction. I'm not a scientist. The existence for these objects was further justified by detailed computer models, but finding one of these things would be a serious challenge because if they exist, they're one of the rarest types of stars, if they could even be classified as a star anymore. In 1975, Thorne and Zykdo explained in a study published by the Astrophysical Journal that these objects would look very similar to red supergiants. In fact, they would likely be extremely close in appearance to some of the most familiar red supergiants in our galaxy, like Betelgeuse in the constellation Orion. These are some of the youngest and largest stars in the universe. They're also fairly common. While Thorne Zykdo objects or TZOs for short, would appear to be similar on the outside, they would be able to survive for longer than a typical supergiant star. Supergiants like Betelgeuse are powered by nuclear fusion in their cores, and they burn much quicker and hotter than main sequence stars like our own, causing them to use up their fuel much faster. When stars like this finally use up their fuel, they collapse and implode before going supernova. But TZOs wouldn't be powered by nuclear fusion, since the core would be a neutron star. Since neutron stars are already extremely compressed, the outer layers of the supergiant would be less likely to collapse into the neutron star. But how would these things even form? Astronomers have offered two different theories for how TZOs could form. Both of them require that both objects begin their life cycles as supergiant stars in a close binary orbit. The first theory suggests that as the stars age, one of them would go supernova, leaving behind a supernova remnant or a neutron star. The other star would then begin to expand if they're around the same age. Eventually, the neutron star would be gobbled up by the aging supergiant, forming a TZO. The other theory involves one star exploding in what's thought to be an asymmetrical supernova, the force of which would send the neutron star barreling toward the other supergiant, where it would collide and form a TZO. Okay, so those theories could work to explain how TZOs could hypothetically... Yes, this is speculation form. But have we actually found any evidence that these things exist? Well, actually we might have. In 2014, astronomers announced that they may have discovered the first ever Thorn Zyktau object in the small Magellanic Cloud, one of the dwarf galaxies that orbits our own. Using the Apache Point Observatory in New Mexico and the Magellan Telescopes in Chile, astronomer Emily Levesque surveyed two dozen red supergiant stars in the Milky Way and a group of supergiants in the small Magellanic Cloud as well. The data revealed something intriguing about a star named HV2112, which was originally discovered in 1908 by Henrietta Swan Leavitt. This supergiant, at the time of its original discovery, was thought to be living on borrowed time, that it was going to go supernova before too much longer. 
But it's been 100 years since the star was first discovered, and while a star can remain in its dying stage for quite some time, looking at you, Beetlejuice. Further analysis revealed some very unusual chemical signatures coming from HV2112. And I can't be the only one thinking about the band Rush right now. Rest in peace, Neil Peart. In particular, the star seemed to contain excess amounts of lithium, calcium, and other elements that could be associated with the nuclear reactions that could take place within a TZO. However, HV2112 also exhibited other strange behavior that the team couldn't quite explain. So one of two possibilities could have meant that TZOs behaved in ways that they didn't fully understand, or the star was something else entirely, which is reasonable. So it was possible that this star wasn't a TZO, and another group of scientists was setting out to prove it showing up in 2018 with new evidence that Levesque and her team misread the data, finding that HV2112 only had an excess of lithium, but not calcium or any of the other elements, suggesting that it was nothing more than a normal red supergiant. But even if HV2112 is out as a candidate for a TZO, at this time it's still listed as a possible candidate, a new star arose which may prove to be an even better candidate. The star's name is HV11417, which does not a good Rush reference make. HV11417 is another red supergiant in the small Magellanic Cloud, and it's also a candidate for the illustrious title of Thorn Zyktau object. It's a cool, luminous spectral type M5e star, and is so bright that it's near the maximum level of brightness allowed for these types of stars. This star exhibits the right levels of rubidium, though it is worthy to note that it's been especially difficult to measure the levels of lithium in the star. So time will tell if this star ends up being a true TZO. Research conducted in 1995 suggests that there should be as many as 200 of these objects in the Milky Way, and they're thought to only die when they lose 14 solar masses, though there aren't many models to suggest what the final fate of a TZO would be, though some researchers think they could become a black hole in their final moments. In any case, there are still five other candidates on the shortlist for possible TZOs. V595 Cassiopeiae, Io Perseae, KN Cassiopeiae, U Aquarii, and VZ Sagittarii. In particular, U Aquarii might prove to be the most likely of the remaining five candidates, as it's a variable star with a magnitude that shifts between 10.6 and 15.9, and it also appears to have an excess of strontium and yttrium, but curiously lacks barium. Suffice it to say, this combination of properties is exceedingly rare, and astrophysicists suggest that exposure to a neutron star event might be the only explanation for how this thing could have formed. So even though HV 2112's status as a potential TZO has been called into question, it remains to be seen if it will join the list of stars that are no longer considered to be candidates. Perhaps once the James Webb Telescope comes online, we'll finally get our answer, and you can bet ScienceGet will be here to break down the data and geek out on the science. If you dug this content, be sure to hit that like button and comment what you think a thorn zyked out object would actually be like. Be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of ScienceGet, and check out our Patreon, where you can get early episodes, sci-fi horror and dark fantasy short stories, your name in the credits, and much more. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.